What's up YouTube and welcome to Ghost of Tabor. This video is more designed for those of you who are new to Tabor or anyone returning to the game. So sit back and relax while I go over my list of tips and tricks. Let's begin. First off, you want to go into settings and calibrate your height. This will set the height of your avatar to reflect your real life height. You can also press the button on the left to calibrate your seated height. So if you're someone who prefers to sit down while playing, you can, and this option will allow you to toggle crouch using the button on your movement analog stick, so you can toggle your crouch. Next up, you're going to want to calibrate your screen size. This will allow you to change the position of the blood effects on your screen to make them more or less prominent. Here, you can also go in and change the vertical position of your compass to get it up and out of your face or down below at your feet. Speaking of the compass, I personally like to keep this up and active at all times. The reason behind this is because while you're in raid, having the compass on your screen allows you to know where you're looking at all times. If you're playing with friends, you can make callouts with cardinal directions, and you always know where your exfils are. You can turn the compass off as it is available on your watch, but I personally prefer to have my health on screen at all times, so I know how healthy I am and if I need to heal without spending a few seconds to toggle through the screens. The next setting here is your head based movement setting. I personally have this on as it lets you move where your head is looking at. Having it toggled off changes that to where your hand is pointing to. Having this turned on feels a lot more natural as you do tend to move where your head is pointed to. I also highly recommend using smooth turn instead of snap turn. Smooth turn again just feels a lot more natural where snap turn is quite jarring and sudden. So I recommend smooth turn personally. Lastly, you're going to want to set your mic muted to true. This keeps your microphone muted while in raids. As there is proximity voice, if you're speaking to someone in Discord or to your chat, other active players will be able to hear you and it'll give your position away. You can also unmute yourself by bringing your hand up to your mouth and pressing the A button on your controller. So, if you're brand new to Tabor, I highly recommend you get into the tutorial and go through the stages here. The tutorial is really well done, and I really commend Combat Waffle Studios and how easy everything is to understand, with the little holographic projectors telling you exactly what to do. I recommend you spend as much time here as you need to to figure out some of your other settings and controls. The tutorial also goes over your hideout mechanics, such as ammo crafting. So if you're ever unsure on something to do with the hideout, you can always come back and check the tutorial. So you've gone out of the tutorial and you think you're ready to play? Yeah, you're not. Before loading into a game with any gear, go to the main terminal and hit training on your selected map. Once you've loaded in, this is an offline solo run of a raid. So there's no loot progression or loss in this mode. So it'll let you take your guns and your gear into a raid to test loadouts without the risk of getting killed by another player and potentially losing everything. I suggest running the training mode several times. This lets you figure out and memorize all the spawns on the map, so if you're wanting to avoid PvP, this will allow you to navigate the map to the higher tier loot spawns. Next up at the main terminal, hit the missions tab and take a look at your traders. If you've ever seen or played Escape from Tarkov, the way to level up your traders is basically the same. Take missions, complete missions, earn reputation. Not only that, but you need to also spend Karunas with the trader. So in this case here, I need to earn 175,000 reputation and spend a million karunas with Minte to get him from level 3 to level 4. You do want to focus on one trader at a time rather than splitting between them all, it's a lot easier to level them up this way. My recommendation is to focus on Spectre first, then swap between him and Minte. Spectre is for all your guns and your attachments, while Minte is for your armor, modules and backpacks. After you've maxed those two, I suggest going for Shiro after the fact for your ammo crafting. Now on to the main thing that almost everyone experiences when playing extraction shooters, gear fear. The fear of taking all of your good gear into a raid, only to then get fucked, die, and lose it all. Honestly, the best way to overcome this is to simply take in anything that will help you grow your bank balance. Grab a vest, grab a backpack, grab a gun, 
and head in. Take your time, play slow, avoid the high traffic PvP areas, get your loot and get out. Once you're more comfortable playing, you'll grow more confident to take in better and better gear. Also, as you increase your trader levels, you'll get access to better gear, being able to buy the gear you lose, making it easier, much easier, to get over the gear fear. Now that you're experienced and you're over your gear fear, the next thing to know is where to go for loot. Silo isn't really the best for loot, it's more of a PvP oriented map. There's only really one good spot to get loot, which is squeaky. It's this large door here in the elevator shaft, they're loud as fuck double doors. But be careful, because this is the more valuable area on the map, it's going to be a high traffic area for players. So if you get in, be prepared for a fight. Island is, in my opinion, better for looting, as there are several really good locations that have a lot of loot. First and foremost is the prison. Inside the prison cells there are a lot of different boxes to loot, like weapon boxes, armor boxes, and the likes. So if you go in naked with zero gear, you'll likely find some low tier armor and a gun to defend yourself. Just be careful for the phoenix. Next is the checkpoint. There's a nearby spawn which will get you here pretty quickly. There's not a lot, but there's a weapon box, an armor box, there's also a helmet box and a few small boxes for loot. There's also a few loose loot spawns which do spawn guns from time to time, so you can come here for quick loot to get you going in your raid. Next up for loot is the boathouse. There are usually a group of at least three or four phoenix in the area, so you will need to be careful. But inside there are several NRS spawns in the bathrooms to the left. And in the main office there is a backpack box in one of the corners, two lockers which can spawn guns, and some filing cabinets which can spawn some pretty decent loot. There's also a wooden weapon crate on the back end of the pier which can spawn guns, and a plastic box hidden here on the right which a lot of people tend to miss. It can have some really good loot inside of it. Next up is the camp. There might be a lone phoenix patrolling the area, so keep an eye out for him, but usually it's quite safe. There are several boxes scattered throughout the tents with varying loot, and at the back there are a couple of boxes, and there's a loose loot spawned by the sandbags here that can sometimes be a gun. Up next, the radio tower. There can be one or two phoenix in this area, one on the roof and potentially one patrolling outside, so do keep an eye out for them. There is a lot of available loot throughout the floors here. The bottom floor has several filing cabinets with varying loot. Up on the second floor there is a key card spawn here on the desk, along with more desks that you can go through with drawers and cabinets. There is also a armor box and an NRS spawn in the bathroom. Praise be the glorious fish. May he ever be slippery and floppy. Welcome to the Church of Fish. There tends not to be too much in this area, but the loot spawns do tend to be of higher tier. At the base of the podium here in the back, there is a small plastic box which can spawn attachments and some food items. And on top, there is a loose loot spawn just here on the podium. In the back, there is a wooden box, there is an armor box, and there's also an NRS spawn on the wall. Lastly is the lab, or research as I call it. This is probably the best place to go for loot, but it's also the highest traffic area. Inside there are a lot of NRS spawns, and if you go in through the back door here, and enter the stairwell here on your right, head down the stairs to the very bottom floor, there are a few boxes down there which can contain some pretty decent loot. Climbing up to the second floor and heading right through the double doors here, there's a lot of high tier loot that can spawn on the desks, and in the back here there is a loot room with some pretty high tier stuff in the boxes. On this floor, in the conference room at the back of the hall, there's a keycard spawn on the table, which can get you access to the vaults, both here on island and on the silo. Lastly is the secret loot rooms. It's not really a secret anymore, but you can climb onto the roof and head to the northeast corner here. 
pop onto the wall and walk along to the edge to this spot here. Look down and there's a small outcropping that you can drop down onto. From here, shimmy around to the edge, walk along and hop down on the wooden platform. Hop into the window and loot up. Everyone and their mother seems to want to get to these spots, so be very careful if you go here. It's very, very high risk, but also very, very high reward. You do also need to be careful when you're making the drop, hopping onto the wall and dropping down onto the ledge. One misstep and, well, gravity is a bitch. Lastly, I'm going to go over a few of my own personal tips for when it comes to player versus player in Ghost of Tabor. First of all, trust no one. Unless you're raiding with a friend in the same fire team, maybe even talking to each other via Discord or TeamSpeak or some other VOIP, trust absolutely no one. They will sooner kill you to take your loot than work with you. Be especially careful of those who sound like they're trustworthy and help you out a bit, those who don't shoot at you and maybe even speak to you for a while. Most of the time they do this to earn your trust before they then wait for you to drop your guard and then cap you in the back of the head. <laughs> Next tip, check your corners. There are a lot of rat spots in this game where someone can just crouch down and hide getting the drop on you quite easily. So make sure you're always checking your corners and keep an eye out for these rat spots. Knowing is half the battle. Next, if you have headphones that you can use with your headset, I highly recommend using them. Audio plays a massive part in PvP and being able to hear the footsteps of your enemies getting close and pinpointing their location is vital to your survival. You can also hear the sounds of gunshots, this can be either players or the phoenix shooting an unsuppressed weapon. You can use this to your advantage to know where there are active players as the phoenix only shoot at the players, so you can use this to figure out where the other players are and then make the decision to move towards them to engage in PvP or avoid the area if you're trying to survive. Next tip, and this is actually quite an important one, always treat a player as if they're a part of a fire team. Even if you only see one player and you only kill that one player, expect another. Sometimes you can kill a player and his friend will be behind cover or lagging behind and may have been called out like, oh, I'm dead. So now he's sitting there in an off angle waiting for you to loot his friend's body just so then he can start killing you. Second to that, don't go right for the loot once you've killed someone. Always take your time and check other hiding spots. Clear your corners, clear the area before going for loot. Because you never know, someone might be watching your fight and just be lining up a shot against you, waiting for you to start looting before he lines up that shot and pops you in the skull. And lastly, probably my most vital tip something that I see in raids all the time and something I couldn't suggest more, turn off your flashlights and lasers when you're not using them. Running around with a bright spotlight or a long green laser shining around is the biggest giveaway to where you are. So when you're not using them, turn them off. This includes on your hip, in your holster, or even in your backpack. An active laser gives you a literal green beam shining into the sky that gives your position away. Anyway, that about does it. These are all my tips and tricks that I know of Ghosts of Tabor. Hopefully you've learned something new or something that will help you with your next raid. If there's anything I might have missed or a tip you yourself use, feel free to leave it down in the comments below. Remember to like the video and consider subscribing for more content or check me out on Twitch. But for now, I'll see you in the next video. Bye!